Hello, my name is Nurse Brown, and today I will be doing a full assessment on you. Can you start by stating your name and date of birth for me? Jamal Dalsin, December 3rd. All right. Are you having any chest pains or shortness of breath? No. All right. I'd like to check your respiration rate. Respiration rate was 18 breaths per minute. Now I would like to auscultate the lungs. I would like to start in the right upper lobe. Just take a deep breath in and exhale out. And then I will move over to the left upper lobe. And then the left lower lobe, in and out. And then the right middle lobe, in and out. And then the right lower lobe, in and out. And then the left lower lobe in and out. And then I would like to check for the lungs on the posterior side as well, starting with the right upper lobe in and out. The left lower lobe, upper lobe in and out. And then the left lower lobe in and out. And then the right lower lobe in and out. Alrighty, no abnormal findings. I would like to go over some techniques with you that can help improve the lungs. One being the incentive spirometer, which can be used 10 times an hour while awake. And it can also be used during TV commercial breaks. When, t when a commercial comes, you can just inhale through the tube and set goals for yourself. And you can improve your goals each day to help um, Im um, improve your lungs. And also you can do a turn, deep breath and cough technique, and that is to help prevent and loosen up any mucus that may be built up in the lungs or you just take a deep breath in and then you turn and then you cough <coughs> and as you cause cough I will note for any sputum or any abnormal findings and now I would like to uh, go over my client with uh, inspecting for any JVD I will, the client will be at a 45 degree angle and tilting his head and then I will just check for any JVD bilaterally and then also I will check the pulses. I will check the carotid pulse on both sides bilaterally. And then I'll check the brachial pulse bilaterally on both sides. And then I'll check the radial pulse on both sides. And I'll also check the femoral pulse bilaterally on both sides. I'll check the popliteal pulse bilaterally on both sides and then I'll check the posterior tibial pulse bilaterally on both sides and I'll also check the dorsalis pedis pulse bilaterally on both sides. Alright and then I'll also um, check for any swelling in the upper extremities or edema. I'll just press or palpate for any edema and I'll also check for capillary refill on both of the upper extremities and I'll also palpate the lower extremities for edema and I'll also um, palpate, I'll assess the toenails for capillary refill on both of the bottom extremities. And now I would like to listen to his heart. Um, I will start with finding the, um, the clavicle and then Go down to the second intercostal, and that should be where the aortic area is. And then I'll move over to the left side of his of his chest, which should be the pulmonic valve, still in, pulmonic area, which is still in the second intercostal. And then I'll move down to the herb point, which is in the third intercostal. And then I move down to the fourth intercostal, which is the tricuspid area. 
And then I'll move down to the fifth intercostal, lining up with the mid-clavicle line, which is the apical pulse. And you would listen there for a full minute. All right. And I would like to ask my client, um, are you having any types of headaches today? Or headaches at all? No. All right. If the client say no, I just move forward with my assessment and I'll assess the client for uh, face, uh, symmetrical, uh, a symmetrical face, and also the shape and the size of the head. And then I will move on to assessing my client's eyes, and I'll ask my client, are they having any blurred vision or any type of vision impairment? Are you having any type of blurred vision? Okay, i ask my client to remove his glasses. And what I do before I shine the light is i ask the client to look up, And I'll check the size before I uh, insert the light into the eye. And the pupil size is four right now. And then I'll shine the light into the client's eye. Alrighty, and it constricted to a size two, while the other one constricted to a three. And I'll shine it in the other eye, which is the left eye. And that constricted to a two and while the other one constricted to a three. Alrighty. And now I'll move on to the hearing assessment. I ask my client, are you having any hearing impairments or hearing problems? No. All right. And what I'll do is I'll perform a hearing test for my client and I'll ask the client if he hears something and he'll state if he hears or not. Yes, I hear it. All right. And I'll do the same to the other ear. I'll just say, can you hear it or not? Yeah. All right. And then I'll move on to assessing my client's nose. And with this, I'll ask him, are you having any stuffiness or nosebleed? No. And he states no. And then I will ask him to perform a nostril patency test. You'll place your index finger on one side. Now inspect the breathing of the client's other nostril. And then he'll do the same to the other side. All right, and then I will move on to the client's uh, mouth, throat, and neck assessment, and I'll ask the client if they had any dry mouth or sore throat. Have you had any dry mouth or sore throat? Okay, then I'll ask them to stick their tongue out and say, ah, I'll check for pink, moist, gum, and if I find any abnormalities. And then I'll ask the client, to take a sip or a drink of something to check the swallowing of the client and I'll check for the midline of the trachea. That's what I'm assessing for. And after that, we'll go on to the um, neurological assessment. I'll ask the client, do they know where they are right now? Yeah, I'm in my door. All right, and do you know what year it is? Yeah, 2010. Okay, and do you know why you're here? Yeah, to help you out. Okay, all right, and then uh, we'll, um, I ask, I'll go through the Morse scale with my client. i ask the client, have you had any falls within the past three months? No. All right, and are you diagnosed with anything that may increase your risk for falls? No. Okay, and also I'll ask the client, um, are you feeling, do you feel weak or impaired or dizziness while you walk? No. And I'll also ask them, do they use any type of assistance? Um, or crutch a cane while walking? No. No, you did not. All righty, and now I will move on to the musculoskeletal assessment. And while doing this, I'll start with the neck. I'll ask my client, are you having any neck pain or knee um, pain? All righty, so I'll place my hand on the neck joint. Now I'll ask the client to look up, which is hyperextension, then look down, which is flexion, and then you'll touch your ear with your shoulder which is lateral flexion, and you'll do it to the other side, which is lateral flexion, then you'll rotate your head to the right, which is lateral rotation, and rotate it the other way. All right, and I'll also do a resistance test with my client, ask him just to press against my hand. All right, and I'll also do it to the other side, just press against my hand. All right. And I will do another upper extremity uh, test with the wrist. I'll just have the wrist and I'll ask him to extend his hand out, which is extension. 
and then our acid and point up, which is hyperextension, then away, which is abduction, and towards the body, which is adduction. And while doing this, I'll place my hand under the client and ask him to forcefully push down on my hand. Alrighty, and push down on it. Alrighty, and then we'll do the same with the other one. Go up, hyperextension down, straight out, and then away from you, and then towards you, away from you. Alright. And then I'll also do resistance on that hand as well while I'm holding the joint. All right, and now we'll move on to the knee joint, assessing the knee. And basically what I'll do is, it's already in flexion position. So I'll just ask my client to extend his leg out. And then at this point, I will know if there's any hyper extension while doing so. And he'll do it on the other side, extending it out. And then I'll do resistance. I'll ask him to try to push up, and then I'll ask my client to push down. All right. And I'll do the same to the other side. I'll ask him to push down, and then I'll ask him to push up. Okay. Got that done for me. That's cool. And now we'll move on to the gastrointestinal. Uh, assessment so well first we need to do the gate walk so the gate walk I asked my client to stand up we done already went over the more scale to make sure he don't have any risk for falls I asked the client to do a normal walk and then after the normal walk he'll do a heel to toe walk and then afterwards I'll just Stand in front of my client, ask him to close his eyes, and I'll be checking for balance, which is called the Rumberg test. All right, and then also after that, I will do the hip assessment of the hip joint. And then as I do this, I place my hand on the hip, and I ask my client to uh, march his leg up like he's marching the right leg. And then I ask him to do kind of kick back his leg. And then actually I ask him to go away, which is abduction, and then come back as abduction. And then afterwards, I'll try to tell him to press against my hand as resistance, press his hip against. All right. And then I'll do the same on the other side. I'll do a marching leg, which is flexion, and then out, abduction, and adduction, and then donkey kick, which is hyperextension. And then I also ask for resistance on that side as well. All right. All right, you may be seated. And I'll go over the Glasgow Coma Scale with my client, basically explaining him that it is a uh, scale used to uh, measure a client's level of consciousness as a person has had a brain injury. And so after I do that, I'll move on to gastrointestinal assessment. And I'll ask my client, "Have you? when was your last bowel movement? And um, then I ask him, um, have you been p passing any flatuous or gas? No. All right. And um, how often do you have bowel movements? Once a day. All right. All right. So after that, I will um, basically ask my client to lift his shirt. He doesn't have to pertain to the video. And I'll assess the skin uh, and the, if, to make sure that it's even all around. And then I will... Inspect it and then I'll auscultate it. I'll start in the uh, I'll find this belly button and I'll start in the right lower quadrant And then I'll move up to the uh, right upper quadrant Then I'll move over to the right uh, left upper quadrant Then I'll move down to the left lower quadrant And after I I'll be in quadrant for a minute in each quadrant. I'll turn my um, the bell on my stethoscope and I'll check for brewery, which is located right here below the sternum. And then I'll note if I hear any squishing sound, which I don't, I just hit aortic. All right. 
And then I will also uh, palpate my client's abdomen as well, starting in the right upper quadrant, going up to the right upper, over to the right upper, I meant left upper, and then down to the left lower. Alrighty. And then now I will ask my client, um, have you had any urinary problems? No. Or you have not had any no. bowel problems either, have no. you? Okay, and then I'll ask my client, um, when was the last time you urinated? Yeah, alrighty. And then we'll move on from there. And then next thing I will do is I'll inspect my client's skin. And first I'll inspect the hair and make sure that there's no lice or abnormal findings inside of the hair and also checking all around. And then next I'll um, palpate my client's, well I inspect the skin, make sure it's even and note if I find any abnormalities and I'm also feeling for warmth all the way down. And then I'll ask my client to hold out his hand. I'll check for um, clubbing in the fingers. If there's any clubbing, um, could be uh, indication of low oxygenation. And I'll also check for the elasticity of the skin. I'll just pull on my client's hand a little bit, just not too hard and to make sure it's going, but it's elasticity is good. And I'll also check in my client's clavicle, um, where part of the skin is located near the clavicle, and check for elasticity. And then I will also go over the braiding scale. Well, some risk factors that can be um, linked with skin breakdown, and this could be um, reduced mobility, um, obesity, and also poor nutrition. And I believe and uh, then I will go over safety. Now, with safety, I'll um, go over some precautions with my client to make sure that he is safety in safe conditions. Um, making sure his call light or phone is always in reach in case of emergency, making sure that his he has grip socks on to lessen his risk of falls. And I'm also making sure that my client bed is low, in a lower position for his easy access of getting in and out of bed. And I'll also make sure that the room light is good for my client.